Yes, sir. Good evening, <coughs> all of you. My voice is audible. Myself is Sunil Singh. I'll be taking your session. Linux administration. My voice is audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Let me start the session. So yeah. this course is about uh, Linux administration. So this course is about like uh, 32 to 35 days, which is the combination of RSCSS syllabus and most of the part of even RSCC, some part is excluded, but we added some parts of the topics which are essential or required in the industry. So it is a combination of the RSCSA syllabus with the combination of the topics required or which will be essential in the industry. So this is the ideal combination of both certification and the requirement. So I'll go through the topics which we are going to cover in this course. So before that, let me just uh, know what is Linux from you, because this course is about Linux administration. So once we done with this course, you'll be eligible to work like a Linux administrator. And the course the topic and the depth will be such that even if somebody is having gap up to two to three years, you can easily cover it. And this is a foundation and fundamental course for your higher courses or for higher level if you want to move, like next level is the cloud, whether it is AWS, SAP, DevOps, you need to compulsory know the Linux. So as you know, as you know, most of the servers in the world are working on Linux because Linux will provide you get better security and faster performance compared to the other OS. Okay, so now let me just start with, let me just start with what is Linux. Yes, whatever you, you think, according to you, what is Linux, please write it in the chat box. I'm waiting for your reply. So this course is about Linux administration. So what is Linux we should be knowing, no? Yes, according to you, what is Linux? I think it's an interface between user and the mission. I mean, uh, hardware. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One answer, I got it. Other person just said something, to... it's not audible. Okay, Satish. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is Tell me, you are saying something? A little bit loudly. Yeah, I think uh, Linux is nothing but it's an interface between user and the hardware. Like uh, when we giving any commands, it will convert those uh, commands into the mission log base, and vice versa. That's the uh, thing. Okay. Uh, what about other person, Anil Kumar? Yes, you are able to hear me. Can you just reply according to you? What is Linux? Because our friend Satish and Mahinder said what is according to them Linux. Can you just write if you're able to hear me, Anil? I'm waiting for your reply, Anil. Maybe it's not listening, but I don't know. Okay, let me continue. Yes, so Linux is an operating system. Linux is an operating system. So the main thing which separate the Linux from other OS is it is an command based. Oh, sorry, it is it is an open source operating system. The main thing which separate the Linux from other OS is it is an open source operating system so okay so my voice is not uh, audible to you mahindra okay so i'm speaking loudly only i'll try to increase further uh is it okay for others because i should know from the others also uh, satish yeah it's fine it's fine too. so yeah. can you just check uh, your end also a little bit uh, your devices mahindra Okay, please do it. Okay, 
So I repeat once again, uh, what is the main thing we separate the Linux from other OSs? Linux is an open source operating system. What is open source? We'll discuss it later today. So let me first go with the importance of importance of the OS. Then we'll come to the Linux. Then we'll discuss the what is open source. Okay. Uh, you are able to hear me better, Mahindra. Are you able to hear me, Mahindra? Clear? Okay, fine. So now let me start with that fundamental basic question. Like our friend also was saying. Yes, our friend Satish was saying it is an interface, something like that. So let me elaborate so that everybody of us can understand. Okay, fine. Now, suppose let us assume this is our laptop uh, system desktop system so this is the system let us assume this is the system on which i am sitting here so as you know the computer is a collection of hardware and software operating system so here, any computer is a collection of hardware and the software. So in the system, there is no OS. There is no OS. Can I able to use this system? Can I able to use this system without OS? Whether it is a desktop, laptop, or any computer. Can I use it? No, we can't. We are not able to use it, yes. So everybody knows this. We can't use the computer without OS. So for that, there has to be some reason, yes? So why we can't use the system without OS? Yes, why we can't use the system without OS? So for that, one simple explanation or answer can be, suppose example, uh, I know example, let's just, uh, I know suppose Hindi language and you know suppose Telugu language. Can we communicate with each other? Now, suppose I know only Hindi language and you know only suppose Telugu language. So, can we able to communicate with each other? No. I know Hindi language, you know Telugu language. Can we communicate with each other? So, first we try to understand then we will go to the subject. We can't. So, how we can tackle this issue if you are facing this issue? You have to communicate with one person who don't know your language and you don't know his language. So what you will do? How you will tackle this issue? We need some software like uh, converters is there. No? We so have to use what? Google converters. Like... Yes, we need some third person yeah. mediator. Yes, translator who understand my language and your language. Is it correct? Yes. Yes. So, same way, now come to the subject. Same way, computer main part is hardware. The computer hardware understand which language? Computer hardware, which understand which language? Machine language. Yes. Yeah. It's called binary language or machine language. Computer hardware or computer understand which language? Binary language. Yes. Yeah. Which is in the form of zeros and ones. And the computer software understand the high level language, which is in the form of the numbers, alphabet, everything. So high level language. And as a human being, as a human being, do we understand binary language? No. We don't no. understand. Now this computer hardware cannot communicate with software. So can the, com the com communicate? Can they communicate with each other? No. 
like in our example, I know suppose in the you know can we, can we communicate? No. So we need some mediator. Who is that mediator between the hardware and software? Between the who is the mediator between the hardware and software? OS. OS. So once we install some of the other OS, which acts like an interface between the hardware and software. So using this interface, we human being can operate the computer. That is the usage or purpose of using the OS. So most of the people in the world are using which OS? Most of the people in the world are using which OS according to you? Linux only. Uh, Linux? No, it is Windows. Yes, Mahindra is correct. Sorry, Mahindra yeah. is correct. Most but of the computers are using backend, they're using uh, uh, Linux only. I think. Yes, as I'm coming to that. I said most of the computer in the world. Okay. Most of the computer in the world are using which operating system? Windows. Okay. Like uh, the home purpose or client purpose. Most of the computer in the world are working on Windows. But we are discussing this course through. Like it. So what is Windows? Windows is also an operating system, which is a graphically designed, uh, which work on the, mostly on the graphical mode, which is designed by Microsoft under Bill Gates. And this Windows operating system is designed using DOS. Okay. So it is why people are using that. It is easy to operate. But our intention is we want to work like a administrator on servers. So most of the servers in the world are using which OS? You can ask anybody or you can Google it. Those who are working in the real-time environment, you ask them, most of the company servers in most of the part of the world, they are working on which OS? Most of the company servers, they are working on which OS? Servers. Linux only. Yes, it is a fact. So if you want to work like an administrator, there is a better scope to work on the Linux because most of the servers are on the Linux. So that is the reason we are discussing this course through the, the Linux administration. So any OS, whether it is a Windows, Linux, any OS, any OS is a logical thing. Any operating system is a collection of programs. Any operating system is a collection of programs. So this collection of program acts like an interface. This collection of program acts like an interface. It acts like an interface between hardware and the software. So using this interface, we, we means human being, we can operate the system or the computer. Without that, we cannot operate the computer. So now I hope you understood the importance of the OS. So if OS is not there, we cannot operate the computer. So OS is a collection of program. Any OS is a collection of program which acts like an interface between the computer and the human being. Using this, we can operate the computer. So, most of the people in the world are using Windows, but most of the servers are on Linux. So, these are the most commonly used operating system in the world. Apart from that, Mac. Mac OS. So these are the three most commonly used operating system in the world. So our focus will be on this because most of the servers are working on Linux because Linux provides very good security, stability, and faster performance compared to the other ones. Okay. So our focus will be so our focus will be on Linux operating system. Okay. Hi. Now. Let us assume in our computer, uh, in my computer, in my computer, so suppose I have installed the 
Linux OS because our focus is on Linux. So this Linux OS also consists of collection of programs. This, this is also a collection of program. So this collection of program is divided into two level. This collection of program in Linux is divided into two level. First level is called level one, which is nothing but your shell, which is your shell. So what is the default shell we are using in Linux? Bin bash, this is the shell name. So the shell will get open when we open the terminal to apply the commands. So like in Windows, if you want to apply the command, you have to go to the command prompt. In Linux, we have to open the terminal. So once we open the terminal, we will use the shell. And the next part of the next level, level 2 of the Linux operating system is called the main part of the Linux OS, which is called yeah. the kernel, yeah. which is called kernel. So kernel is called the core or the brain of the Linux operating system. So let us try to understand. So let us try to understand the so let us try to understand the work of these two levels. Okay. What the shell will do and what the kernel will do, we'll try to understand. After that, uh, I'll go through the what are the topics which we are going to cover in this course. I'll go through it so that you can get an idea about what are the things which we are going to discuss in this course. So here, our focus is on Linux. So most of the people in the world are using Windows, but Windows is suitable mostly for client or home purpose. For servers, they are having server OS also in Windows, but most of the servers in the world are working on Linux because it is more secure, stable, give faster performance compared to the Windows. It's having very good security. So who, what is the main advantage of using the Linux? It is an open source operating system. What is open source? We'll discuss. So this OS is designed by, who designed the Linux, the Linux OS? Windows OS designed by Bill Gates using DOS. Linux is designed by Linux Talwar using what? Unix. So please remember, Linux OS is designed by Linux Talwar, a person from Finland using the Unix. Windows is designed using DOS. Linux is designed using Unix. So what is the difference between Linux and Unix? If anybody asks, you have to say Unix is a completely command-based operating system. There was no graphical interface. In Linux, you can work with command as well as graphical. And another important difference is Linux is a open source operating system, what is open source, we'll see. Whereas the Unix is a hardware dependent, or you can say proprietary based operating system. I repeat, the Unix is a proprietary based or hardware dependent OS. Means in the Unix, this Unix OS designed by the at and company, American Telephone and Telegraph, under the Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. Dennis Ritchie is called father of C language because Dennis Ritchie is the person who designed the, uh, the, who developed the C language. So if you want to work on any software language, mandatory language is C. First we should know C. So C is designed by Enestall. Oh, sorry, C is designed by, C is designed by whom? Dennis Ritchie. So this gentleman, Dennis Ritchie, along with uh, Kim Thompson of uh, at and company, American Telephone and Telegraph, they designed the Unix. 
operating system, which is completely based on command based, no graphical interface. Advantage of Unix, very good security. But disadvantage, Unix is called hardware dependent or property based OS. So this OS is designed by, uh, by AT&T company. So they gave the Unix operating system, AT&T company, they gave their Unix operating system name as Sys3, Sys5. So this Sys3, Sys5, a Unix OS, which is designed by AT&T company, can be installed only on the AT&T machine. By this, they earn a lot of money by this feature initially, because at that time, there was no competitor to them. Windows was not there. So Linux came in market in 1973 by this uh, gentleman, Linus Tolver, oh, sorry, this gentleman called Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson of at and company. So they were literally forcing the people if they want to use the their OS by their machine, which will be very expensive. So initially at that time when there was no competition for them, Unix was the first major OS. So people were compelled to use their OS. So they earned by that a lot of money by seeing these other bigger companies like Sun Company design their Unix OS. They also made their OS hardware dependent. So they designed Unix OS with what name Solaris. So Solaris can be installed only on Sun machine. It will not support other machine. So suppose I'm having Dell laptop. Can I install Solaris? No, that is called hardware dependent. Then IBM company released their Unix OS with what name AIX, which can be installed only on IBM machine. It will not support on Dell or Sony or Lenovo or Sun company. Uh, Dell laptop also. Then HP company designed HP UX OS, which can be installed only on HP machine. But the major problem in the Unix was hardware dependent. So if you are changing the OS means you have to change the OS. So that's why the companies and the people were not using the Unix. Initially, there was no like to competition to them, no other major OS. So people were using, but when the Windows operating system was designed and released by Bill Gates, by giving graphical interface and hardware independent means Windows OS can be installed on any machine, whether it is assembled machine or Lenovo, HP, Dell, any. So most of the people switched from the Unix to Windows and Unix was literally dying. And then Windows people started raising their license key very often. So this gentleman, Lena Stalwar, using the Unix design, a new operating system that is called Linux. So whatever coding and program he has written, he put it over the internet, which anybody can access, not only access, can modify. That's why Linux is called as open source operating system. Now, are you understanding what is meant by open source? Are you understanding what is open source? Yeah. So I repeat, open source means the Linux OS designed by Linus Talbot. So to design any OS, that person or that company need to write the source code, which consists of the collection of program, which has been written to design that OS. So whatever coding or program Linus Talbot written, to design Linux kernel, we put it over the internet, which anybody can access and modify. So this feature is not there in any OS. And that is completely free of cost. You don't have to pay anything to Linux Talbot. So anybody can access the Linux source code and can modify that and make their own OS with their own name and logo. That is the reason in Linux, we have so many flavors. Some of the flavors like Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, Kali Linux, Suzy, Debian, Turbo Linux, Boss. These are the some of the names. Fedora, like that, many are there. Okay, now Rocky Linux is also there. So can you learn, now out of this, can you learn all the flavors? No. If you decided that I learn all flavor, then I will do the job means your whole life will be over. So most of the companies in the world, in the Linux are using what? Red Hat. 
So we are going to discuss this course using Red Hat through CentOS. Why? Because for Red Hat, they are charging for providing the support. But some people who form one association with the name CentOS, So, we are going to discuss this Red Hat through the CentOS. What is CentOS? CentOS stands for Community Enterprise Operating System. Red Hat is giving their OS for servers in RHEL format. RHEL means Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is suitable for servers. So, same thing we are getting from CentOS. So CentOS means a group of people who form one association with the intention to spread the Linux. So they, they held a talk with the Red Hat people and they convinced them their intention is not to gain any, uh, to earn any money or gain any money. Their intention purely is to spread the Linux. With that intention, they convinced the people, Red Hat people. So what the Red Hat people is doing whenever they release a new OS, they are giving the complete source code to the CentOS. CentOS stands for Community Enterprise. C means community, group of people. ENT means enterprise. OS means operating system. So, this community, what they are doing, they are taking the source code and releasing exact same thing with same features. Only difference is, only difference is, in Red Hat, we have to pay, not for OS, but getting the support. But CentOS is completely free, but no support. This is the only difference. So we are using this OS for training purpose. So we are going to discuss the RHCL 7 to the CentOS 7. Okay. So now in all the flavor, the constant, cons, uh, the common thing is all will have same Linux kernel, which is designed by Linus Talwar. So, so if you are good with one flavor, you can work in any other flavor because the architecture and the structure will be same. So some of the commands will be same. Some commands might be different. So that uh, any person can learn all flavor, no. So if you are good with any one flavor, you can work on easily work on other flavor also. Example, you learn now on CentOS or RHA. Now your company is using Debian. So some of the commands might be same. One particular task, if you are giving one command, it is not supporting in Debian. So immediately what people are doing, then Google it. So you have to just Google it, equivalent command for Debian, for so and so. You get it, type it, or oh, that's how the people are working. Or you can say in simple word, say suppose if you know car driving Maruti, now you have purchased Tata Sumo. Do you need to learn again the driving, car driving? No. So whatever, some difference will be there in features. So once you drive three to four days, you will understand, adjust to the few features. Same way, if you are good with one flavor, you can work on any other flavor. Because the architecture and structure will be same. All Linux OS will be designed using the Linux kernel, which is designed by Linux Talkbox. To that, they have to add some features. Then they can have their own OS with their name. Is it clear up to this? Or if you have any doubt, please tell me. Are you following? Are you following? Yes, we are following. Okay. So now you got to know that what is the open source. So I repeat once again, open source means whatever coding and program Linus Talwar designed to develop Linux kernel, we put it that complete coding and program over the internet, which anybody can access and modify. So this sort of thing is not available for any other OS. That's why Linux is separate compared to others. Now let us come to that. What is the use of the shell and kernel? We'll try to understand. So this Linux program is divided into two levels. First shell, the other one is kernel. Now the shell is something like a security guard for the Linux OS. 
which is not there in Windows. So what happens? Now you open the terminal. Terminal means you are open the shell. What is the default shell? Bin bash. So what is the role of this? First thing it will do once the user write the command. Once the user write the command, immediately what it will do? It will check that command is correct or not. If the command is not correct, you will get a message command not found. So whoever designed or developed the Linux OS, they will give us predefined command. So whatever command we are writing, that should be there in the predefined command. Otherwise, it will say command not found. The first thing it will do, it will check that command is correct or not. If it is correct, then what it will do? Before it execute that command, it will identify or it will check that user, which user has given that command and that user have the privilege to run that command or not. Because the normal users can execute only few commands and all the command can be executed by only root. So once the command is correct, it will check this command is given by the root or the normal user. If normal user is given, the normal user have that privilege for that command or not, it will check. So what is the role of the shell? It is like a security guard. First, it will check command is correct or not. If it is correct, then it will check this command is given by which user, that user has the privilege or not. If suppose that user has the privilege, then immediately what it will do, the command is correct and the user is having the privilege. Then what it will do? It will convert that command, which is written in the high level language. It will convert that command from the high level language when the input is given and convert it into binary because computer does not understand high level language. So what are the three things the shell will do? First, it will check command. Command is correct or not. Then second, if it is correct, the user have the privilege. The command given by the user have the privilege or not. If it is not having privilege, we'll get a message. Access denied or permission denied. If it is having the privilege, then the in the background now what the shell will do? It will convert that command from high level language to binary because computer understand binary language. So these are the three roles the shell will do. Is it clear what the shell will do? Is it clear? Yeah, yes. Then, then the shell, once it convert the command from high level to binary, it will send that command binary format to the kernel. Now kernel takes over. Now kernel is called the core or the brain of the line operating system. Now, what is the function of the brain? Same way the Linux kernel will work in the Linux operating system. So like in our body, what the brain will do? It will not do any work, but it will control and manage which particular part of the body should do what work in which scenario. So in a fraction of a second, this will be decided, control and managed by whom? Our brain. So same way, whenever a task comes to the kernel, now kernel will decide just like a brain, this particular task should be done by which particular hardware or software. So it will, kernel is called Linux, kernel is called the brain or the core of the Linux OS. So it will decide, control and manage this particular task should be done by which particular hardware on the software. Once that, uh, now once it decide and once it, uh, now, control and manage. Once the task comes to it, the kernel will decide this particular task should be done by which particular hardware. Then it will send to that hardware, which because the input is in binary format now, which is converted by our shell. So now kernel will con control and manage the task should be done by which particular hardware. It will send to that hard required hardware. Now the hardware will do the task and the output is ready in binary format. So every OS contain Linux or every OS contain kernel. The kernel is called the main program of any OS. Now, now it will control all the tasks. 
which task should be done by which particular. So once the task is done by the computer, the output is in binary format. So now the kernel will send the output which is in binary format to the shell. Now what the shell will do? It will convert the output which is in binary format to high level and displays on the displays on the monitor. So this is how the Linux operating system will work. So in Linux, the security is very good. So first the shell will work. So the shell will execute the command which are known to it. Whatever command is unknown to it, it will not execute. So suppose some user or somebody, a hacker, send one virus file. If it is a Windows environment, that file can be executed run by any user because it's in Windows, the file will have execute permission. But in Linux, the file should be created without execute permission. So if some virus file is being sent by hacker to the one particular computer where Linux is running, so that file can be run by user sitting on that computer, he can't because that file in Linux will have read-only option. So the user, if want also, they cannot execute or run that file. So this type of feature you don't have in Windows. So now it will run only the files which are known to him, shell, which are unknown, it will not run. The virus cannot attack the Linux. So in Windows, you have only kernel, but no shell. But Linux have extra stability, security. So in Windows, the files are understand by extension, like executable file will have .exe, database file .dat, media file mp3, batch file .batch, text file .txt, like that. But in Linux, the files are identified by, by the type of file and mode of file permission, not with the extension. In Linux, files are identified with type of file and mode of permission. So type of file is identified directly by symbols and alphabet. Like if it is a normal file, the symbol or alphabet is hyphen. For hidden file dot, for block file b, for soft link l, for socket file s, yes. for directory d, for pipe file p, for special character file c, like this. The permissions we'll see later after maybe one week. So Linux is a foundation course for you. So from this, what you understand, Linux is more secure than Windows. At the architecture level, like the shell is there. And the OS security due to the mode of permission, like file will have execute permission. So Linux file do not have execute permission, Windows execute permission. So Linux is more secure. That is the reason people are or companies are preferring to use Linux. And Linux is the foundation for, for your higher courses like AWS, DevOps, VMware Admin, Oracle, Hadoop, SAP. Okay. So now I will go through the topics which we are going to cover in this course so that you will get an idea. So this course, which is of 32 to 35 days, is divided into two parts. First one is system admin, second one is network admin. Sorry, so the Linux administration part course, which is about 32 to 35 days, is divided into two parts, standalone administration, network administration. So standalone administration, what are the topics we are going to discuss? One minute, my battery got low. So now, under the standalone, what are the topics we are going to discuss? First, introduction of Linux. A little bit we have discussed today. We'll continue tomorrow along with the features of Linux. Then, we will also discuss 
the structure of Linux OS, where exactly what data will be stored. So, and compare it with Windows. So, if you want to operate the Linux operating system, you should have the idea where exactly what data will be stored. So, that we will discuss in the Apache's file system hierarchy standard, the structure of Linux OS. After that, we will see the Linux installation. CentOS 7, which is exactly same like RHU 7. Because most of the company servers are on 7. Yeah, it is there, but it is not popular. 9 is also there, but latest one nobody uses. If you work on 7 also, you can easily work on 8 and 9 also. Same commands will be there. Then, 9. 7 and 8, uh, that means the versions? Or, uh... No, this is the version. RHL 7, then 8, 9. Mm -hmm. Nobody is using 5 and 6. They are using mostly what 7. So, we are going to discuss this 7. So if you work on seven, you can work on eight and nine also. Okay. Okay. Most yeah. of the servers are on seven. That's why we are discussing seven. Okay. See, uh, we are not going to do the development part here. Oracle scripts will not be there. So here. This is the level one course according to the Red Hat certification, associate level. So first introduction, then features, then structure, installation. After that, basic commands. So in the basic commands, we will start with we will start with what? Scripting, shell scripting is there. After that, Oracle scripting the level three. That is for the developers. This is for the administration part. Now, basic commands. So in basic commands, we'll start with how to log in, how to open the terminal, how to use the CD command, PWD, ULS. Then we will see how to create the files. So here I've just written basic commands, but minimum three days we will be discussing basic command, how to create the file using CAD, touch, VI editor. Then how to create single directory, multiple directory, parental directory, how to copy, how to rename, how to delete. Okay. What is absolute path? What is uh, what is relative path? These things. Then after that, we'll be discussing how to create the soft link and hard link. Then in any interview, you will get definitely one to two questions under booking process. Booting process we'll discuss in depth in detail. And so Linux OS then loaded in six stages. All the six stages we'll be discussing. So booting means loading of the OS from hard disk to RAM till you get the login screen. So what happens we'll discuss in detail. Then uh, we have run levels, six run levels, zero to six. In which run level, what happens that also we'll see. After that, we'll start the administration part, starting with user administration, in which we are going to discuss how to create the user, how to assign the password, how the user can log in, the user information is stores where, in which database file, how to open those user database file with filtering commands. All these things we'll discuss in user administration. After that, we'll discuss the group administration. So group is a collection of users, which is created to assign same permission to multiple users. So before we assign same permission on multiple users, we need to know how to create group, how to add the users into the group to provide them same permission to multiple users in group administration. Once we know how to create users and group, then we will we will control the users and computer by applying permissions. So in Linux, we have three types of permission, starting with the basic file permission, then access control list, then then uh, we'll discuss the So 
So we have three types of permission, starting with basic file permission, access control list, and advanced file permission. All the three permissions will be discussed. So basic file permission, apply the permission categories wise. ACL, different permission to different users. Advanced file permission, special permission. Like three types of permission, set UID, set GID, stick it with all three will discuss. After that, we will move to the disk management. To manage our disk, what we need to create partition. So how to create partition, how to make, how to access the partition by temporary mounting and permanent mounting. Then we will discuss a logical memory swap with that, how the system performance will improve. Then after that, we will discuss very important topic, LVM, logical volume management, through which we can combine multiple hard disk or partition into a single storage space through which we can do the resizing of our storage space. We can do the resizing, increasing of the file system space that is done through LB. That we will see. After that, we will move towards the next concept, RAID, which is used to provide the backup of hard disk means the data will be stored, important data will be stored in multiple disks so that if one of the disks get failed also, we will we'll not lose the data. So we have different red levels, red level 0, 1, 5. So which level is best to find? So how to configure red level 5 using the software RAID, using the application MDADM, we'll see. Then after that, we will see as an administrator, you should know how to take the backup. So by we will be discussing how to take the user's data backup by using dump command, then how to compress the data by using the gun zip tool with the tar command, then how to take normal backup with CPL. All three commands will be discussing. Then after that, we'll be discussing scheduling of jobs, automation of jobs using AT and front tab. And finally, in the standalone, we'll be discussing the process management using PS and top command. Whatever task is running, how to monitor it. And which task is not required, how to fill that process that we'll see in process management using PS and top command. Because these are the two most commonly used commands for checking the activities in the server. Then after that, First part is completed, standalone. Then we'll move towards the network admin. There we will be discussing how to install the application in Red Hat, which will have the extension .rpm. So to install .rpm extension application, we have two tools, RPM and YAML. So we'll be discussing both the tools, how to install the application first with the RPM, then with YAML, by configuring YAML. After that, we will see how to assign the temporary IP and permanent. IP address. After that, we'll start configuration of servers. So our first server will be to do the sharing EFTP of files, not directly on any OS EFTP. Then to do the sharing from Linux to Linux, ENFS server, both files in directly, but only Linux to Linux, do not support other OS. For sharing from Linux to Windows, we have Samba server. How to configure that we'll see. After that, you'll see how to configure DNS server, which can resolve name to IP. After that, the Apache web server to host the website. So how the website has been hosted using the Apache web server, we'll see in Apache web server. Then how to configure DSCP server, which can assign the IP address to the client. And how to take the remote desktop using SSH. And how to copy data from one machine to another, SCP. Telnet, nobody is using because it is not safe. So this is the total course content, which we are going to discuss in this course, which will be about 30 to 35 days. So I hope you got an idea about what are the things which we are going to cover in this course. Is it clear? Yeah, yes, it's clear. Okay, so that brings to the end of our today's session. So before... shall, yeah, one thing, uh, is shell is just, uh, uh, designed by any software like other OS components? No, see what happens 
when you open the terminal terminal is when we open default what is the first program we are using that is your shell the shell is the first program of your linux operating system here can we say terminal is nothing but putty or like that no no that is a third party application uh -huh. to connect to the linux server from windows uh -huh. so shell uh -huh. is one interface where we can like you know windows to apply the yeah. command what you will open in windows windows what command prompt to apply yeah, the command CMP. what you yes, open yes. Yeah, so CMP. in linux we have to use what terminal okay terminal in the sense uh, it's a shell uh -huh. so when we open the terminal the shell will get open what is the default shell we are using that shell name bin. is slash bin slash bash okay slash bin slash yeah. okay yes. okay okay yeah it's like our uh, uh, windows cmp yes uh -huh. okay See, you go to any higher technology in the background okay. at the architecture level, those, those things will not change. Mm -hmm. The core remains same. Okay. So can you run the computer without the OS? No. It's Whether not. you use AI or cloud, it's not possible. Yeah. The fundamental things remain same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that brings to the end of our today's session. That's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Good night. Thank you. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Tomorrow we'll discuss the features and the structure of lines.